Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Feel the Pulse session, which many of you already have been able to participate. And we very warmly welcome those who never participated in this one here today. And as is it, uh, it is an open Feel the Pulse session for, for destination management professionals. So very, a very warm welcome to you, to you all. My name is Claudia Van Tulenaar, and I will be your co-host today. I'm a senior global change maker with the Global Destination Sustainability Movement, and I will be joining to get joined together with. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I am Rebecca Johnson, a senior change maker at the GDS Movement. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you all. Lots Wonderful. of people still coming in. Okay, so just some housekeeping notes as usual before we begin. begin. Um, as usual, the session is being recorded. Um, please stay muted unless uh, you're asking a question uh, during the Q&A. Uh, should you wish to uh, ask a question at any point, please signal to the moderator um, via the um, emoticons uh, at the bottom of the, your screen that you would like to speak. And for optimum viewing, uh, please also select speaker view in the top right hand corner of your screens. Um, so to tell you the agenda for today, um, as you will have seen, we're gonna separate uh, the meeting into two parts. So the first part will be a, uh, focused on the sustainable development goals. Uh, so we will have, uh, first of all, a presentation from Claudia uh, entitled A Decade of Action. We will then have a presentation from Aileen Crawford from Glasgow Convention Bureau. And the second half of the presentation of the meeting will be focused on impact management. And uh, our partner and colleague Genevieve Leclerc from Meek for Impact will give us uh, a presentation um, and facilitate some discussion around impact management within your destinations. Um, so before we begin officially with the session, um, we just have some uh, special announcements to make. So I would like to hand over to Guy Bigwood. Um, our Managing Director for the GDS Movement, um, who would like to share some great news with you. Over to you, Guy. Great, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm really uh, excited to, to share two things. So first of all, the GDS Movement, as of uh, last week, is now comprised of 70 destinations. So uh, that's, uh, it feels to me like a, a monumental number and achievement and a great community that we're building together. So that's that's super exciting to have reached 70 destinations working on sustainability and re regeneration. And the, the city that kind of made that happen is Paris. So I see Francois and a few other people from the from the team from Paris have, have joined and they're going to start working, becoming part of the, the movement. So welcome to you guys. That's fantastic. Um, but it, it's, it's already been a, 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 a big few months um we've i've just was looking at some numbers and you know we've had 13 des new destinations join up to, to benchmark uh, in, already for the new uh the 2021 benchmarks so that's good we've got uh, 12 capitals uh participating three regions we just run out a, a new big campaign with um with switzerland called sustainable that you'll hear about in the future um and some really interesting new regional participations as well. So uh, some really exciting stuff happening. And so um, we just wanted to celebrate that and uh, thank you guys and welcome the, those who haven't been here before to, to the movement and to the, to the family. Thank you. Wonderful, Hi. Guy. Thank you very much. And because uh, following this, because we are so many destinations today, and to really also celebrate this, this diverse community, I would really ask you, and many of you know, so please, if you can take a paper and write down your city of where you are and hold it into the camera so that we can do some photos. And then I ask you also, please, to look around you and to really let it sink in from everybody, no? if, if you could open your cameras, those who are, are, are not on camera right now. So that would be really wonderful. And if you could hold it into the cameras. So I'll wait, I'll wait. 
so to see and because oh we have to we have three uh, three <laughs> we have three rows to go through it's really unbelievable so paris sapporo in asia wow good evening copenhagen berlin finn galway ireland bordeaux barcelona dublin basel london i almost can't breathe so really flanders uh, montreal Spain. So really, thank you so much. Singapore. Oh, so Mexico. So you see, we are truly global today. And this is absolutely fantastic. So following to what just Guy was, was saying to this wonderful moment. So with this, um, because we are so many also new people here, we will first um, go into a short speed dating with you. And we will send you off for a couple of minutes, just three minutes and into one-on-one -on -one and to meet somebody new or somebody you didn't talk to for, for a while. So with this, it is now my pleasure uh, to introduce my esteemed colleague and friend, Claudia Van Tulena. Um, to, uh, with, to, to present the next uh, presentation. Claudia is founder of Sustained Impact, as well as consultant for the GDS movement and member of the Events Industry Council's Sustainability and Social Impact Committee. Claudia works to support organizations and destinations to shape their transformation to conscious and regenerative business models, creating value for everyone. Over to you, Claudia. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And I will share my screen and now I need the sign for you as well if you see my screen <laughs> and if you see what I have here. Yes. Please give us a yes. Okay, wonderful. So I will shortly talk today a couple of minutes about the decade of action that is 2020 to 2030. And um, actually, as uh, as we have seen, most of the destinations have their strategies aligned to the sustainable development goals, which is really great, fantastic. But we also know that there are some not yet, some working, so we have different, different levels. And so just as a, everybody knows basically the SDGs, I would say, but again, it's, um, I would like to bring it back to really go very deep that the sustainable development goals is really, really to make our world a better place, not just ticking off the boxes, but really there is a profound um, uh, concept behind it. And it's built on the principles, as you know, people, planet, prosperity, but peace as well is an important part, partnerships. It's universal and it's really about uh, not divisible. So they all belong together and which comes then to a later point with a cherry picking of SDGs. And then also um, it is really about leaving no one behind. And so these things are many times um, not forgotten, but left at the side. And so I, that's something what I really wanted to call out. And the question here, uh, what I wanted to introduce is also like, how are we doing? And the bottom line is no country in the world is on track to achieve the sustainable development goals. And, um, and, and awareness is growing and growing that we really have to transform uh, through transformational change and to really truly be socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable. And this data comes from the, from the World Benchmarking um, Alliance. And then another interesting fact is um, that the progress is from uh, uh, on all the SDGs is, is seen as very poor. And there was a, a survey, um, which was actually end of last year, and um, where sustainability experts, uh, with, we have five to 10 years at least of sustainability experience, um, were asked, um, how would you rate society's performance to date in having achieved progress toward each one of the sustainable development goals? And this uh, survey was done um, really uh, throughout a broad, um, not only corporations, academia, NGOs, and so on. So really a, a very wide variety of, of people. And as you can see here, the blue is the good and the, and the orange one is the poor. So this really reflects the slide, what I was showing you before. 
And also what we can see here is that industry innovation, partnerships, the clean energy, these kind of things, the more regular, let's call it regular sustainable development mm -hmm. that are doing much better than the really, when we talk about social progress, um, inequalities, reduced inequalities, where if we don't reduce inequalities, that will be really a very, very um, difficult thing because um, we are a common humanity and this is really key also for up-leveling all the other goals. So this was uh, just a few, um, few uh, information from outside. And so this one, it's really nothing short of a transformation of the financial, economic and political systems that we are in. And this speaks, of course, then not only, of course, to destination, but to everyone. So really to hopefully have this shared vision um, for common responses for everyone. And, and that's why we are here, because we are here to design better strategies for our destinations or for our um, 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 uh, organizations. And as the UN Secretary General already said, last year uh, when the COVID crisis hit. Yeah? It's really about building more equal, inclusive and sustainable economies and not to, to be also in a resilient place. So it's really talking. So the social part is so, so important. And so that's why also again, the question, how might we as destinations contribute a value to society? This is really a, a profound uh, question to think, uh, to think about. And here, and also thinking about going probably deeper in the targets and in the indicators. And so this is just an example, which you probably most know about the 8.9 target, which is really about promotion of beneficial and sustainable tourism. And the, the, what is one of the, the strategies is to um, extend the local the local um, buy and, uh, and, um, and power in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the place, you know? And then because this, as, as we all know, it creates jobs, it promotes um, culture and products and helps people. And there are some wonderful examples of destinations who are here on, who, who, who really work, um, work very, very targeted with this. And then of course, the classic that you all know is the, 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 the food waste program, again, with a target 12.3 concretely. So not only the SDG 12, but the really the target 12.3 and then going down into the indicators. And then just as an example um, that I wanted to bring here is also there are tools out, out there for organizations which really help to understand, to go deeper with the sustainable development goals. Uh, the left-hand side is the, is the famous SDG compass, which is really an approach, as you can see here, understanding the, how, do, how do I define priorities? How do I set goals? How do I integrate and how do I communicate? And on the other side, we have the SDG Action Manager, which is a, is a, is a very comprehensive tool, which goes, as said, very deep down into, 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 indicate, into targets and indicators. And then an example from our own events industry. So the Events Industry Council, last year, they brought out the, um, the, the principles for recovery. And um, these principles were aligned with the SDGs. So basically um, the principles that they have identified. So just as, a, as an example um, here, the four, as you can see, or the different numbers, I will not read it, but so that you can see it's even that one, it's, it's very clear in all the documentation um, regarding the industry, the, the SDGs are a, a very common pillar. And then another thing for events, like when you have conferences in town or meetings in town, the principles for sustainable events are also a very useful help for event organizers. And they state out four points. And actually the first one is really, it comes from the historical perspective that it was always like, who is responsible to integrate sustainability into your events? Oh, the client didn't ask. Oh, but the supplier didn't offer this what we had many, many years, and it's still a little bit like that. But that's why the print one of the it's a shared responsibility. And then we have the, uh, the points for the environment, the social considerations and the economic considerations, which are mapped to the to the sustainable development goals and to see which bucket uh, uh, falls into there. And so this is also very nicely um, to be uh, that can be used for events 
it's public, it's, it's shared publicly, you can download it, you can share it with your event organizers who come into town or into your regions, and you can also um, endorse um, this, this um, principles publicly on, on this website. And then lastly, um, there is this nice tool, which is the good life goals, because as when we talk about the agenda 2030, it's really about a good life, a thriving planet, flourishing places. We want to live good. That's our birthright, so to say. So these um, good life goals are a fun way to engage with um, residents, with your uh, event attendees, and with visitors alike. So um, yeah, so basically this was a little, a little excursion um, from my side um, into a little bit different kind of um, perspective on the sustainable development goals. And with this, um, I would like to, we come to the naked part and um, we will come actually to a destination who has been implementing the SDGs and really now coming to the destination part. And I'm very happy to um, introduce now Eileen Crawford from the Glasgow Convention uh, Bureau. She is the head of the Convention Bureau in Glasgow. And um, Eileen, we look forward very much to your presentation. So showing how Glasgow in uh, walk the talk in, in implementing the sustainable development goals. Hi, Claudia, and hello to fellow destinations. It's so nice to see you all. And I, I hope with the, the couple of slides that I'll share with you today, that we'll be able to just look at some of the actions that we've done here in Glasgow, more almost like a, a case study. I saw on the chat there that so many of you are already incorporating the, the UN goals into your work. So this is really just a, an example of where Glasgow has, has used, used the goals almost as a toolkit for, for ourselves and our clients. And I'm sure you'll have many more things to share and discuss throughout the session as well. Um, as you know, or I hope you know, our city is truly hoping to be the host of the UN Sustainability Conference COP26 this November. Our city has pledged to be net zero by 2030. We have a city climate action plan that also incorporates the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So we're really trying very hard as a convention bureau to align with the city and I hope that this short presentation gives you some ideas of how we've, we've done it in, in our city. So People Make Glasgow Greener is the Convention Bureau strategy in our campaign to introduce sustainability into the discussions that we have with our clients and our delegates. Our strategy covers these four key areas. Glasgow actually means dear green place in Old Scots. So we feel that that's such a part of our city's story is looking back over its industrial heritage where our city has really gone from steam to green. And that was all part of our, our story when we joined the GDS index as it was back in 2016 and really understanding this was the, the moment for us to, to look to a new and a greener future for our city. Social enterprise is a huge part of the work that we do with our local industry. Food revolution, we took that actually from one of the white papers from GDS to consider how we can dive a bit deeper into how our delegates uh, use and consume the restaurants and food revolution in our city. And of course, accessible comes into that as well. So you see here that we have used the icons from the 17 goals that Claudia showed us earlier. And we just love the way that they are so visible, so recognizable. They are, they're easy for us to structure our strategy and the support we give to our clients and information to our delegates. And that's why we were so keen to embed them into our Dear Green Place. And we also really appreciated the fact that the, the UN goals aren't only about green, it's not just about sustainable. It's also looking at where society is impacted and where as a convention bureau, we can do our part for our city. And this is where we wove in around the social enterprise, the food aspect and accessible as well. 
a lot of this information you'll find on glasgowconventionbureau.com and just recently we've been able to adapt our website that we can search on venues and suppliers that are both green accredited but also have accessible information on their website as well so we're really trying our best to highlight and champion those partners in the city that are working towards or working with these goals and allowing our conference organizers and delegates to give that sustainable choice as well. So delving a bit deeper, uh, when we're looking at how we're using the goals and actually being very practical around this as well, um, the whole idea is that we're being able to bring the goals to life. It's all well and good having them as icons within a paper or icons within a strategy but we wanted to really bring them to life for our conference organizers so they could see what does it practically mean for them when they're hosting a conference in our city so some of the 17 goals resonate so much closer to conferences than others as you all know because you've all all been looking at, at these goals for your own destinations but just delving a little bit deeper into some of them what we're doing is we've created these flashcards and the flashcards have the goals in them or on them and we've also given some hints and tips about how to deliver them through the mode and through the conference themselves and what will happen is that it, we'll have these interactive workshops with our clients with our conference organizers we'll bring on board our local academics who are working on the conference as well with our team and have some fun with it. Have some fun with where can we go with this? How can you make your conference more sustainable? And if you're doing fantastic sustainable activities, then tell people, use these fabulous icons from the, the goals and put them on your website. Explain to your delegates the great work you're doing. Tell your stakeholders and sponsors how sustainable your conference is so we can all champion the great work that these conferences are doing. So for example, Goal number one, no poverty. What does that really mean to a conference organizer or to a, to a delegate? And some ideas there could be around such a thing as the volunteering, volunteering with the local community. Many of us may have had the opportunity to have local people work as volunteers on conferences. A great way to give that confidence and support to people who are maybe trying to move up a, the career ladder or get onto the career ladder. How accessible really is your conference when it looks at destinations that perhaps find it harder to afford to attend conference? Maybe travel bursaries could come under that no poverty goal or something as simple as a conference fun run that's supporting a local charity that's helping people get into employment. And I think this whole time that we've been in just now that the hybrid option what everyone's saying is that democratization of education and bringing that opportunity to, to people who maybe can't afford to go to conference, that could also be captured within the goals. Another one that we'll all love as, as the conference world is around the, the good health and well-being. Glasgow Convention Bureau, we've got a delegate health and well-being guide, giving ideas of where to do fun runs, get free bike hire, have a a walking chat at lunchtime with delegates, our convention center offers free yoga sessions for delegates, things like that. It just makes it really practical and brings it to life around these, um, this, this workshop. And I want just to finish on another one, which is really important, I think, to our conferences, especially those within the association world, is around that gender equality around academic educational meetings. And at the planning stage, when we sit down with our conference organizers and our meeting planners to talk around gender equality on panel sessions, gender equality in speakers, and also gender equality in those able to attend our conferences. So that was examples of how we were using those goals and to bring them alive for our conference organizers, but also to do a deeper dive ourselves as a city and what are we really talking about when we're embracing the goals um, in Glasgow and that, that dining out and enjoying a sustainable dining experience for all of us, it's an important part of, of our conference experience. So we've looked to see if we could within our conference organizer toolkit, try and do more with something around the food revolution 
again, just, just looking at the white paper from the GDS movement and trying to do more along this space and looking to see how delegates could have delegate garden experiences. We could have associations plant their own wildflower areas in unused land in our city and just considering how we can just do that deeper dive with the, the goals at heart. Then to finish off, all of us, I think, as Convention Bureau, realise we have this advocacy role within our cities. The role of the Convention Bureau to encourage, to educate, support our local industry in their efforts to be more sustainable. So for the Convention Bureau, we're currently working with our hotel community. We've had funding to allow our hotels to go through certification for green tourism. So we can help that journey that we have to go through as part of our benchmarking exercise with the, the index and just support our partners in doing that. Within our request for proposals, we always ask for sustainable information and accessible information from our venue partners. And we also help our members and industry members with their sustainable strategies and celebrate every time one of our members creates a new sustainable strategy by sharing that across the, the membership. We're doing workshops with our local industry. This aligns really nicely with hosting COP26 later this year to just give that confidence and support to our industry members as they are on their own sustainable journeys. So I hope as I just come to the end there, that gives you some idea of the practical use that Glasgow has, has chosen to progress with the, the UN Sustainable Goals. And if you're looking for more information, it comes under the People Make Glasgow Greener Strategy on the glasgowconventionbureau.com website. And with that, I shall finish the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eileen. Thank you. It's always, it's always super interesting to see really how it's taking into, into daily life, so to speak. And, and with this example, we really look forward to all of the destinations to see where you are on your journey, to hear more about it, and um, also a call out. So for future things, um, please reach out, out to us. And I see a hand raised because now we are coming to a small um, a question and answer. If you have any question that you would like to raise to uh, Eileen, this is the moment and I see, let me just see because we have so many screens um, going on. <laughs> so um, yes, um, Guy, you have a question. So please go ahead. I always have a question for Eileen. Thanks <laughs> Eileen for sharing. Um, uh, under SDG 13, under climate action, I just saw when I was looking at your website yesterday that you've made a very important declaration. I wondered, and that was news to me and, and that for me, I think you're the first convention bureau in the world to declare a climate emergency. What does that mean? We are from you? Working, we're working with tourism declares, and many of you may have heard various industries are championing the climate emergency through their own industry. So I'm sure there's music declares, but tourism declares is very keen to see that those of us working in the, the tourism and events industry declare climate emergency and sign up to say that we are going to, to have our own strategies to work towards the goals to, and really put ourselves front and center to say that we are going to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And this is an opportunity to sign up to declare that you are supporting tourism declares. Um, there's going to be more about Tourism Declares at a workshop linked to COP26. And I think Tourism Declares are very much looking at how they can support destinations, which is tourist boards and convention bureaus, look at their own strategies towards reducing uh, carbon emissions or being more sustainable. Um, but we felt that we had to be there and to be one of the, the founding signatories so you'll see more coming out in the in the trade press about us signing up to, to tourism declares. And hopefully it's something that, that many of you may feel important to do with your own organizations. Yeah, and we're um we're working a lot with tourism declares at the moment and and 
that will in fact be part of the GDS index criteria for the uh, for this year. Um, and so there's expect to hear a lot more from tourism declares and us as well. So. Great, thank you. Congratulations, Eileen. So, okay. okay. Are there any other questions? Um, please raise your hand or virtually or with your real hand. I'm just, um, Anlo, uh, did you just raise your hand? I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Anlo Chole. Okay, now that- yes, perfectly, perfectly. Ah, okay. <laughs> Perfectly. Thank you, Claudia. Um, I hope it's not a stupid question, but uh, the question I had is, uh, this is incredible what you, you just presented there, but was it the initiative of the Convention Bureau or um, were you supported uh, around, I mean, uh, when I say initiative, that means it's, it's you who, who were the, uh, the Convention Bureau was the, the motor of, uh, of all those initiatives or uh, how did you do this? Hello there. Yes, it's it's the Convention Bureau really coming up with the, the ideas, working in partnership with the venues in the city and with our clients as well. And we took so much inspiration from the team from the GDS movement when we joined the index in 2016. Gao, remember, we knew that the city itself has bold aspirations. Glasgow has had to transform itself from an industrial city to a mm -hmm. city. Our city has the largest number of people working in renewable energy in the UK. We have Europe's largest wind farm on our doorstep. We knew that we had a story to tell and it was the joining the index that gave us that route to tell that story. The medical is the largest number of conferences, then engineering in our city, then it's low mm -hmm. carbon and energy conferences. So this all aligns so nicely under that key sector world of the, the business world in our city, as well as the climate emergency. So as a convention bureau, we knew that this was something we had to do to support right. the city, but also our clients. So yeah, you've, you've just seen our journey through up to from 2016 in that presentation. No, no, definitely, but it's impressive. And the, that's the, uh, I wanted to know the, uh, the, the bottom line of the, uh, of the, uh, the um, no, no, great, great, thank you. Thank you for your answer. You're most kind. Thank you very much. And with this, um, we are coming now to the next block. And for this, I will give over to Rebecca. Thank you, Claudia. Um, so our next speaker today is Genevieve Leclerc, a facilitator, speaker, trainer and founder of one of our partner organizations, Meet for Impact, based in Montreal, Canada. Genevieve is passionate about applying design thinking and impact management practices to accompany organizations through innovation. Her work focuses on achieving greater social impact in the business events and tourism industry, and she has changed, trained teams from many destinations in developing and implementing frameworks for managing a more impactful visitor economy. So over to you, Genevieve. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning for those of you that are in the same time zone as I am, um, straight from Montreal. Good afternoon to the Europeans and good evening to the Asians that have chosen to, um, to join us. Um, so we will talk about a few things uh, this morning and I will launch my presentation. Um, there we go. Awesome. Does this work? Yes, okay, cool. Um, so we will talk about impact, we'll talk about impact management, we'll talk about why it's important to talk about impact on top of sustainability. Um, and we will have a chance to do a bit of a, of a brainstorm together at the end of the presentation. So three topics this morning. Um, using a common language, it's been, um, it's been raised that the word impact is often misunderstood. Um, it's being confused with sustainability, with legacy. Um, so we'll try to 
sift through that. Um, why should we manage and measure impact on top of having a sustainability strategy? And what does it mean for DMOs? Um, so using a common language, we've been hearing about impact quite a bit over the last few years. Um, and it has been confused with uh, a number of other terms. Sorry. Um, so if you could go into the chat, um, and those of you that think you know what the difference is between sustainability, legacy, and impact, let's see what you can come up with. I'll give you a minute to post your answers um, and see what we've got. Open my chat here. So what's the difference between impact, sustainability, and legacy? Has everyone got an idea? Okay, while you're thinking about it, we'll keep going. Um, impact is really change. And that is the core difference. We could define impact as the sum of changes that are generated by an organization through its actions on the community and the ecosystem, which take into account the needs of stakeholders and the system targeted. Sorry, let me go back to that four concepts here that are essential to understand impact. The first one is change. Someone's unmuted themselves. Thank you. The first concept is change. It's a modification of a present situation to a future situation. The second one is it is achieved through actions. The third one is it takes into account the needs or the gaps. And the fourth one is, it is stakeholder based, not organization based. What does this mean in terms of what impact is? Impact, when we call about, when we talk about social impacts, we obviously talk about all kinds of impacts. Yeah, Economics yeah. and environmental impacts are included in social impacts. Impacts reflect a positive outcome on a condition or a problem. They produce a social asset or common asset or common knowledge. They fill a need or a gap. And the greater the gap, the greatest the impact that you have. An impact can be unforeseen or they can be purposeful. When we talk about impact, it really comes hand in hand with the concepts of sustainability and legacy. Sustainability, as the Brundtland report has defined it, is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own. That definition has greatly advanced since then. We still quote it. But today, sustainability is really understood as a balance, a balance between economies that are inclusive and that bring prosperity to all, with healthy ecosystem and environment and social equity and well being. So, the core concept around sustainability is really that balance that when you're de delivering solutions or you're delivering um, services or products, that you're taking those into account. Legacy is a concept that has come forward through business events. The core understanding of legacy, it's that it has been transmitted. It is something that is left behind, that is gifted, that is yielded through an action, in this case, particularly an event. And it produces a tangible asset. Unfortunately, legacy is being used widely in our industry as representing a change. The legacy is the vehicle through which change happens. If you're creating a new program, the legacy is the new program. How pro that program helps people is the actual impact. And that's an important kind of definition to understand. So the impact is really the benefits or the changes that are happening over time that stakeholders experience as a result of action. While legacy is often organization centric, this event, this organization has created this legacy. Impact actually speaks from the sense of the beneficiary or the person that has benefited from that legacy. 
So it's the result of a good sustainability and a good legacy strategy. So what that means is a sustainability strategy is basically evaluating your, your priorities, your issues and formulating objectives that will enable to create that balance between the pillars. Business events legacy planning strategy would be about planning for maximum positive outcomes of events by having a strategic and purposeful approach to event attraction and to event management. While impact management is really the extension of those two, it's a practice by which we purposefully manage resources and assets in order to bridge gaps, meet needs, and meet explicitly defined goals. The measurement bit is a subset of the impact management and the measurement is a process by which you can understand how much change you've created. So now that we've kind of gotten that out of the way, let's look at why we manage impact. So I see we got a few, a few answers in the chat. Um, not much. I think you're going to be able to, uh, to answer this one better. What are the benefits of impact management? In your destination, if you take to the chat, what benefits are you seeing to managing impact? Give you a minute to think about it. What benefits could we derive from managing impact? All right. So impact management is a very, if you put it in the simplest term, it's ultimately aimed to mitigate the footprint of your activities. And we call footprint the negative effects of your activities on the earth and amplify the handprint, the positive impacts that you can help shape. That is what impact management is in its simplest form. And when someone tries to, to, to explain it, what it is in one sentence, you can quote that sentence. The benefits of managing impacts are many. The first one is your understanding how your activities are impacting nature and society. And a lot of the biggest mistake we see is people developing sustainability strategies, not understanding what their real impact is. So through an impact management approach embedded in a sustainability strategy, you first understand what negative and positive impacts are you responsible for. It should also support your organizational strategic priorities. Impact actually helps you deliver on all of your other objectives. It amplifies your action and amplifies your mission. If you start implementing impact and data, you will identify the areas of improvement and drive data-driven decision-making rather than intuition-based decision-making. It's really great to engage stakeholders on an aspirational journey. I think you're all, most of you are part of the GDS movement. You understand all about being engaged in an inspirational journey. Uh, but we find that it's really, it works with our teams. It works with the newer generations that are truly looking to make a difference regardless of what they do. It also helps orient tourism related activities towards being recognized as a true value creator for society, not just driving dollars into our destinations. And it also is a source of business opportunities, just like sustainability is. So fundamentally impact is amplifying your business objectives while you're pursuing your business objectives to grow and thrive and, and serve your clientele. And you're focused on managing your resources to do that. It will allow you to deliver impact and impact being the change that you're going to be responsible for. And make no mistake, we often, we're often asked, but I can't focus on impact objectives and, and neglect my business objectives. If you're truly making an impact and you're truly serving your clientele the way you should be, you will naturally deliver strongly on your business objectives. Finally, what are practices to maximizing impact for DMOs? So obviously the first practice is 
be part of the DDS movement. I think that's your first step onto the impact journey. But what else can you do over and beyond that? You've already signed up. You've already got a strategy. How can we as a DMO be responsible for generating positive impact? We often think that our role is limited, but I think Eileen has really, really well depicted how as a DMO, the posture is changing and we're slowly becoming drivers of socially, social economic development in our communities. And we're being supporters of the priorities of our, our, of our government for that development. So where can we enact change and how can we amplify that change? The, w, uh, the UNWTO, um, through its Restart Tourism um, campaign, has really, really stressed the fact that any tourism recovery should take full account of all of its impacts on the economic, the social, and the environmental spheres. And it should no longer be addressing only the needs of visitors in the industry, but it should also be addressing the need of nature, Nature is a really important stakeholder. It's the main resource that tourism is exploiting. And our host communities, which are also going to become very important stakeholders in the tourism of tomorrow. We are all aware, and I know that just because you've signed up here, you're very aware of the impacts of the visitor economy and of events. Um, there is a, a, a plethora of impacts that are being generated that are currently not being measured. And the aim of having an impact strategy is to be able to develop a strong narrative backed up by data, facts, and qualitative storytelling on what those positive impacts are and how they drive social economic development in our communities. The first thing I recommend is look at what your assets are. Your assets are the current strategies you've got, your governmental strategies, your DMO strategies, your sustainability strategies, your participation in the, D, uh, in the GDS index. All of those strategies are assets that are often disconnected and not leveraged fully. Your ecosystem is also a really strong asset. Eileen, you've explained to us how you were um, leveraging that ecosystem uh, to develop your strategy and the supplier criteria in the GDS index really points out how you should be leveraging that ecosystem. How can you be using them more? How are you using your tourists and your events as strategic levers, strategic drivers of change in your community? And finally, are you leveraging your local community? It's one of the biggest assets that you have as a destination management organization, very often overlooked. How many destinations last year when they started to implement local or hyper-local tourism strategies in the response of the pandemic simply had no channels to their residents and had to borrow channels from partners. And I've been told by more destinations than I can count, we simply have never really talked to our residents. So now we need to create these channels from from scratch. So let's very quickly list six strategies and uh, Rebecca will explain at the end of the session how uh, if you want to delve deeper into these six strategies that we've got a plan. But very quickly, the first strategy we've talked about it with Claudia and Eileen this morning, develop a comprehensive strategy that aligns the purpose and your actions with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Make a plan and also don't look at just what you're doing, but make sure you're anchoring that in your local or your national SDG strategy for maximum impact. The second strategy is develop a pathway to generate and measure societal impacts through events. Events are a fabulous asset that are coming into your city that are probably leveraged for about 5% of the value that they should be having. How will you develop a purposeful strategy, a purposeful pathway to identify how events that are coming to your city can help bridge local needs or local gaps? How are you gonna define that intention of change through that event? 
How will you mobilize a whole stakeholder community around it? What kind of projects and activities are you gonna deliver? How are you gonna measure and monitor these activities? And finally, how will you communicate that strategy to your clients, to your local stakeholders, to your government? Strategy number three, involve your resident community in a process by which you're generating meaningful conversations with residents about what tourism is for them, what it means, what its role is in your city and what impacts positive and negative are on the residents. If you're doing a tourism resident survey, that's not a, that's not a, a community engagement process. It's the basis of what you should be doing, but how are you acting on that resident sentiment survey result? A process of involving your community and developing a community inclusive tourism approach means that you can truly develop a comprehensive framework for making sure that tourism responds to the needs of the city, of its community and maximizes its impact. Strategy number four, turn your strategy into a monitoring dashboard. And we've got a few destinations that have done this and I'm gonna quote Julie from Bordeaux because we've been working with her on doing that. She's been doing a fantastic job um, just with a few hours of training, she's developed a really impressive dashboard. Uh, but have a dashboard. Don't just hope that you're putting a strategy out there and you're implementing actions and magic's going to happen. Tie your objectives to specific actions. Identify the indicators that you're going to be monitoring. Identify the targets, because it's good to have indicators, but you need to have target to know how well you're doing. And what's your minimum baseline for determining whether you've done good or not? Always plan for how you're going to collect the data because you can have indicators that require data that you simply cannot have easily. So be realistic about your ability to collect data and take measurements, monitor regularly. And as you're setting indicators, those that do already have a dashboard often only have what we call process and output indicators. How many activities did I do? How many people showed up? How many audience did I serve? How much waste did I recycle? Or what's the quality of my action? But start thinking about having outcomes indicators. And those are harder to get. Admittedly so, it's a journey. Outcome indicators talk to you about how beneficiaries have felt the impact of your actions. So very short-term outcomes, mid-term outcomes, long-term outcomes, they talk about results. They're harder to get because you usually have to get data outside of the organization. And sometimes you even have to rely on other organizations to give you data. And that's why I'm saying, when you start this journey, be realistic about the indicators that you can actually have but set yourself a higher bar on saying, can I include a few outcome indicators in my strategy? Strategy number five, measure, have indicators. We have a framework with indicators. There are others out there. Ours is based on eight capitals. So basically the purpose of having a measurements framework is to identify how your actions are generating positive value. In this case, if you see capitals as being assets, how are my actions or my business events or my visitor economy increasing our stock of assets in any of these capitals? What are the outcomes that are generated? What's the positive result? How do they line? Uh, how do they align with SDGs? And then what are the actual indicators that we're going to use? Regardless of the framework for measuring your impact that you adopt start thinking of making sure that you're measuring at least a few points of data beyond the economic output. And finally, strategy number six, report on impact. Your annual report is not an impact report. An activity report is needed. You need to say what you've done, how, many, how, many money, how much money you've spent, uh, what activities you've put in place, what new programs have put in place. But impact reporting is going to talk about the effects of that. 
it is not organizational centric. It's written from the point of view of the people or the groups or the nature that has benefited from your actions. It's outcome driven, not activity driven. It's often data in rich context. It involves a lot of qualitative information, but it makes such a better story. So there's not just six strategies, but these are the six that I've chosen to, um, to present. So, and these strategies are really how you can go beyond having a mere sustainability strategies. We're gonna have um, a little exercise on this. Um, we were gonna have a poll, but um, but the poll isn't working. So what we've actually done is we have created very, very quickly a Jamboard um, that we're gonna have you go in. Now I'll stop talking. We're gonna ask you three questions in the Jamboard. Um, you're gonna go in and answer the poll through the Jamboard and then we'll come back and have Q and A session for about 15 minutes. So what are Jamboards? I'm going to reshare my screen. Jamboard is this. So it's a very small whiteboard, very easy whiteboard tool through uh, Google. So I've got three questions. Question number one, question number two, question number three. You navigate between the, the pages with the little arrows on top. And basically what I've asked you to do is vote with a sticky note with the name of your destination wherever it feels that it's the right answer for you. So what, what does that mean? I click here left on sticky note. I click once, sticky note appears. I can change my color. I can write Montreal and then I save. And then my little, and then I cancel because I don't want a second one. And then I can move around my little note. I can, I can change its size. I can write other things too. You can write qualitative things in it if you want. You can change by double clicking on it. So we're gonna give you a few minutes to do this. Try to answer the three questions. So the questions on the left, the first question, what are your current practices around impact management within your DMO? So create a sticky note, put it in the column that best fits. Move on to question number two and question number three. Ale uh, Rebecca, can you share in the chat the link shared so, yeah that's just been shared so perfect go for it <laughs> so go for it people jam board jam board <laughs> awesome um so feel free to put some questions in the chat or um put a little reaction a little hand up if you'd like to we've got some time we've got what 10 or 15 minutes uh, rebecca to chat Okay. Yeah, let's have a look. Should we have a look at this? Uh, the answers yep. to the first one. So the first one. Um, very few people actually have it in place. We've got a few destinations that are working on training their team and developing an impact strategy. Congratulations. Um, a whole lot of people wanting Oh, people are moving around my boxes. Um, a lot of people wanting to do it this year. That's awesome. And, um, and we've got, oh, we've got no one thinking this is not in their priorities. I guess this is the biggest news of them all. This is um, the best news of them. So let's look at two. Two, oh, we've got people, people sitting on the fence. Um, we've, so two for, let's say Valencia and Berlin, we'll, we'll flip you over that you've, you're actually, you've got a dashboard with actions, indicators and targets. Um, a few are, are doing it up to a point, but want to develop further and uh, more do not have a dashboard at the moment. And then three, so Glasgow and Bordeaux have got an event, business events, legacy planning strategy in place. We've got five cities that are doing it on an ad hoc basis, um, but are developing a stronger strategy. Um, one city, no, okay, she's moved over. Um, so a few cities that have not implemented business events, legacy strategy. Awesome, guys. Um, so over to you. I'm okay 
comments, anyone, raise your hand, jump in the chat. Did I all put you to sleep? <laughs> okay, perhaps uh, while you are thinking about that, um, if you have some questions, then please put them in the chat or contact us um, after the session today. Um, I also would like to, first of all, thank Genevieve for that informative presentation. Thank you very much and uh, for the quick fix uh, for the poll as well. Um, continuing on the theme of impact strategy and measurement, um, it's also my pleasure to share with you a preview of just one of the educational courses that will shortly be launched by the GDS movement over the coming months. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Uh, so this masterclass on impact strategy and measurement represents a collaboration between uh, Meet for Impact and GDS Movement and will be composed of the four modules you can see. So an introduction to impact management and strategy, using the SDGs to drive impact, measurement and reporting of impact. And finally, uh, the fourth module is impact and measurement strategy development. And this final module will focus on a more practical approach, enabling participants to apply the knowledge gained to their own situations. Total class time is approximately 12 hours, although the time investment required from our participants will be around 20 hours, as there will be homework and preparation set along the way. Initially, uh, this course is aimed at individual destinations, so an opportunity to get for you to get together uh, with your uh, with your DMO colleagues and really focus on uh, it, your impact strategy development. If you're, any of you are interested in finding out more about the course, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with us uh, following the session. Rebecca. So, um, yes. Meanwhile, yeah. if we don't have any questions, um, I would like to propose to ask Julie to actually talk to us a little bit um, about the work that she's done, because I think the dashboard could really be an inspiration. Um, so can I just hand it over to Julie? And then I'm going to ask Dima to also talk a little bit about their strategy, because Sapporo has come up regularly on the left hand side of the Jamboards. Um, so if I can ask Julie, if you want to unmute yourself and just tell us a little bit about the work that you're currently doing. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Geneviève, for asking me to, to tell a bit more about the work we've been doing all together, thanks to your help. The thing is that we are in between different kinds of norms. We have the GDS, we are also in process for an ISO certification. We are doing also a French label for destina sustainable destinations. So I felt that I had a lot of compromising actions to plan in my destination without having a a proper dashboard to follow the actions. So we, with the help of Rebecca and Genevieve, we, we, we built a dashboard with kind of all the, what is asking us all the norms we're participating in, such as the ISO certification or the GDS, what are the real expectations we have to plan, to, we have to have in mind, and how can we plan actions to respond to this compromising uh, norms we are taking part in. So we have kind of the norms we are, we are in, also the actions, and how we can measure those actions with the help of the different um, services in our DMO. So I've built all the indicators and objective parts with the help of my colleagues to see what output or outcome indicators we can try to reach for this year taking into account that it's obviously a complicated year and also maybe in a more normal year for events and tourism, what all the objectives we could reach. So it's kind of in process um, work because uh, we are still uh, putting the, the dashboard up to date each month and changing it uh, to a more realistic and up to date version. But it's kind of interesting to see also how um, how I can work with my colleagues who are not really into sustainability mainly like, because I'm sustainable um, project manager so it's my day-to-day -day work to work on sustainability but maybe not for our convention bureau of our 
I don't know, promotion department, they are of course aware and implementing sustainability in their actions, but not really thinking into objectives and indicators. So it's actually motivating them also to see how that what kind of real objective and actions they can reach. So it's a different kind, it's a different point of view for them too. So maybe if you have some questions or anyway, I'm still glad to share my experience or work in progress, I would say better. <laughs> yeah, do, do get in touch with Julie. I think um, she's got a lot to, um, to show. And also the fact that she was able to advocate for her position to now become full-time um, sustainability development. Uh, congrats. I'm sure many DMOs are very jealous. Um, Dima and Megumi, um, you've been doing your own work. Can you tell us a little bit about how your progress is? Uh, yes. Trust me, uh, you don't want to be put on the spot at 12 <laughs> at night or... <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Um, Two sentences. No, no, no. It's uh, we've been doing some work. Uh, well, a lot of work with the uh, Genevieve uh, with the Meet for Impact team, and uh, for us, uh, the big priority, of course, has been uh, capacity development within the bureau. Trying to understand uh, how, of course, when it comes to measurement, you have to have the team uh, being able to process uh, the material, and you know when by the time you get to the output as a promotion effect. Uh, you have to understand what your destination is doing to bring that impact to the destination, uh, to the city. And uh, for us, uh, for the association meetings part, we have been always, uh, well, we'll we, all be, we have been uh, really keen to focus on why do we want these conferences to come to our city or what sort of, uh, what sort of fields or businesses we want to focus on as a destination in the long term. Uh, but at the same time, there are also incentive travel, there are also events and other things that we need to be changing as far as SDG sustainability and impact concern. Uh, so um, for us at the moment is of course, it's a, uh, capacity development within the Bureau and then try to understand how we can uh, measure properly and then of course uh, um, how do you call it promote properly uh, and put our destination out there on the map uh, I hope that makes sense <laughs> thanks Dima and and what's um, what we found to be really um, stimulating is the fact that Japan is very progressive on the SDG strategy and Dima and Megumi have been wanting to make sure that they were anchoring their work into the city's work, um, the prefecture and the national work as well. So there's a there's a real wish for alignment. Now there's there's some challenges, I think, uh, whenever we try to align with governmental strategies in any destination. Um, but that's it's been impressive to see the commitment from uh, from Dima and Megumi and their team on that. We had a couple of other destinations that were best in class on our jam boards. We've got Tirol, you've got Prague, we've got Paris, Geneva, Bogota. Does anyone else want to share a little bit of their journey on impact? Just unmute yourself and jump in front of the class. Bogota, Bogota, where are you, Bogota? No? Okay. All right. We won't put anyone else on the spot then. <laughs> Rebecca, I just, over I just kind of <laughs> added to that a little bit. Um, I think we're in that situation that many, many destinations are, are starting, and it's that kind of thing that you know what you know, you don't know what you don't know. And um, looking at the data and when we actualize the data, most of the cities who think they're reporting are not reporting quite as we would imagine, shall we say. So there's, I think we've all got a big journey ahead of us. And so for us, the next few years is, is a really important journey of on 
towards impact. Um, and that's really, you know, a lot of our focus, you know, because if you have impact and you manage impact right, then you regenerate. And so that's, you know, a lot of the messaging that we are and, and the focus that we're really trying to catalyze. So you're going to see a lot coming out from us. Rebecca's just shared how we're, we're launching um, the, uh, the, these masterclasses as part of the academy. Um, we're, we're doing, we're working with many destinations already with, with Genevieve and, and the team. Um, and so there's a lot more to come. So it's really quite exciting times. And so for me, this is quite a, a milestone, this, this, this presentation here, because it's really kind of sharing a lot of the thinking that we've been working on really for about a year, isn't it, Genevieve? We've been working together. On, on and I would say that, you know, both from Dima and Julie's um, and, and, and Eileen's testimonials, um, we've really been identifying how capacity of the team is a major step. Um, and, and if you can start building your team's capacity to understand sustainability, first of all, even that's the first, uh, yeah. the first base, mm -hmm. uh, but how sustainability is generating impact and how we can change our mindset on impact to see it from the point of view of the value we're creating, not the activities that we're putting out. And that capacity is 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 acquired through training through understanding through building our networks and our ability to build an impact ecosystem around us not just an industry ecosystem around us but how do you build an impact ecosystem in your city and get people to be minded towards the same way and if 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 that's your first step and if you can commit to that this year already it will get you on the wagon it'll get you on uh, on the proper road and that's it really isn't it it's that experimentation um you, you, you got to get out there and start experimenting and some things will give you the results and some things will fail but you'll get better the second time so it's really this is real area which is about experimenting and trying and failing improving and succeeding um so yeah exciting and time. collaborating Julie yeah said. collaborating to make it better and more impactful Good. Okay. Thanks. Excellent. Okay. Thank you then, um, everybody. We're coming to the end um, of the meeting. So uh, before we say goodbye for this time, I would just like to share um, the next steps with you um, for uh, the next meeting. So one second while I share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so thanks everybody um, for joining. Um, to those of you that are on the call that haven't yet signed up for the GDS Index, um, Omni, our online platform for submitting your criteria, will be open from June the 1st. Um, so if you would like to uh, join uh, Benchmark in the GDS Index this year, please do send us your applications, get in touch as soon as possible, um, as those who are already uh, benchmarking uh, will tell you it does require quite a bit of uh, preparation, so uh, it's best to get signed up and get familiarised with the whole process ASAP. Um, the next session of the Feeling the Pulse will be on Tuesday the 11th of May. Um, that will be for all members of the GDS movement. Uh, and the topic will be destination certification approaches. So we'll be looking forward to welcoming the GSTC to that uh, session. Um, we hope to see many of you there again. Um, there will be a recording of the session that will follow. Um, if any of you would like to sign up to our uh, GDS movement newsletters and communications, then please do uh, do that via the newsletter that you will receive. Um, otherwise, I think uh, all that's left is to say goodbye um, and to thank everyone for joining. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.